So let's continue. So yesterday I end with a little bit generalization of Hellman result using Mont-Jampel solution having log terms. So what I said is not so precise. So let me say, state that part again. So law is a defining function. This is C infinity. Then always hash means you have one more dimension. So this is a homogeneous expansion. Then I consider uh, expansion of this form. Sigma j equals one to infinity eta j log n plus one log log hash. So this is new. Okay. So this uh, eta j is smooth. It's downstairs. So the point here is that uh, here is hash. So these two mean just lifting by my perm z naught square for everywhere. But I have to put hash in here. This is not yesterday's talk. So I should put this here and consider everything on, on the ambient space or C star bundle. So I consider the equation equals Z naught to N. So, so solve this. So this is a mon equation we need to solve. So this has solution, so solve this and use law. So solve this, but throw away all, all the singular term because you cannot differentiate that part. So just pick up this and define G tilde by dd bar minus law hash. Okay. Then uh, if you throw away log terms, Low hash itself doesn't solve the mon jumper equation. So here is a little bit tricky part. If you just put this low hash, it's not the solution. One plus something low to n plus one. So some error should happen here. I use the same eta for here and here. This should be almost equivalent to the eta one here, plus higher order term. So this is an error. So Ricci is a, Ricci tensor is d d bar of log j hash, log hash. So this term will kill better. This means d bar essentially some constant eta, roughly this form. This means rich tensor vanished to very high order. So, so for example, if you consider just a boundary value of rich, that, that's still zero. So, So, for example, scalar curvature should vanish because this order of vanishing this, so just taking trace is zero. So, scalar curvature, what non trivial is this? If we apply Laplacian to n times two scalar curvature, that is some constant multiple of this eta. So, eta appears here. So, this gives an obstruction to the smooth solution. Exists as a smooth solution to the Monjan Bell solution equation. So this is called obstruction tensor. Obstruction. Sure. 
this, this is not tensorsor maybe function. Usually called Pfefferman Graham function, Pfefferman Graham obstruction, this thing. So the fact I don't prove is that if eta boundary value equals zero, then rho hash hash equals z naught square. Uh, not square. Okay. So if this term vanishes to the first order, then it completely vanishes. This is built in in the equation. If the first term vanishes, then the equation forces other term to vanish. So, so if this function vanishes, then it becomes rich flat. So this is the only function you should worry about. So, say example. So n equals two case, we can do very much detailed description of the Bergman kernel. Okay. So n equals two. P0 is the first term, so this should be pi squared 2. Then P1 should be 0. This, I, then this should be some constant multiple of R squared, but by dimensional reason, that this should be 0. This, this equals 0 always for well, n equals 2. But by this dimension, there's something special happen. It's not difficult to prove. Then, so this is the first phi term, and log term start here. So the first term should be some constant multiple of square s. So I know the number. This is this is not non-vanishing. And next one is. Some constant, so the, these are different constants. So, R42 square. There, there are other terms that like 3, 3 square. This is possible, but, uh, but this is zero or always for this dimension. But by dimension reason, this vanishes. So this is the only term survived. And there may be linear term, but uh, this is the only term which survived. If you apply Laplacian more, you apply more Laplacian, that will kill, because eta is essentially harmonic. So, so this is the only term which survives. And five, is you have R five two square. One, uh, four, three. There may be other candidates, but they all vanish by the dimensional reason. So you can generate this by using computer, and so the algorithm works. And the identification of these constants, again, done by some approximation for very simple domain, like a tube domain, or some good domain in Mozart's normal for almost some, some. So algebraic procedure can determine this constant. The application is a Ramadanov conjecture. N equals two. So this is essentially due to Robin Graham. And Robin attributed this to the Dan Burns, but he never published the details, so he call it the Robin's result. So suppose Psi vanished to the second order. Then is rho Kali equivalent to the sphere. So this is a statement. So we can use this formula to prove this. So suppose psi, so this in particular implies that phi three equals or low. Okay, if psi vanish, the first coefficient should vanish. This implies that s 
they soon vanish to the first order. Then by this observation, so the boundary value vanish, then it should vanish. So it implies S equals zero completely. Okay. Now substitute this into here. So then you have no no phi three term. Then this imply phi four equals or all because we have low here, so you only have this. But then this implies that R four two equals zero. So this curvature term should vanish. Then Then this should imply this. So here I need to do some geometry. You use Mozart's normal form or um, Chan connection or Kautan connection theory to prove that if this curvature vanishes, it should be spherical. This is a special result for n equal to, but uh, by using this expansion, you can read Bergman kernel to the curvature of the boundary. So. We can do detailed calculus of the Bergman kernel in this way. This argument doesn't work for higher dimensions because in higher dimensions you have many more terms. So what we can say is that in higher dimension this term survives. So if, if in this case we can say that if the Bergman metric is Einstein, then this should vanish because and the Einstein potential function should be unique. So if this vanishes, then it should be spherical. So this, this is the one, one proof of the uh, characterization of the Bergman kernel being, a uh, Bergman metric being Einstein in price, uh, a little bit more than this. So in that case, omega should be the pole. Okay. So this is the local theory. Now we really bit change the direction. What's the global invariant? I want to construct global bihomotic invariant domain using the Monjampel solution. Okay. So the first observation is uh, compute the volume of the domain. So consider. Bergman kernel, this is the measure, and try to integrate this. Then this is, so Fj, this is a complete also normal system. J equals one to infinity, omega dv. But this normal means this is one. So you have to, There's a Japanese laser. <laughs> it's quite nice. Okay, so one j equals one to infinity should be. So this is a counting and dimension of the Hilbert space. That's infinity in this setting. So the answer is trivial, trivially infinity. But you can do some trick. Pick epsilon small and consider the shrinking of the domain. So if you integrate over whole domain, it's infinity. So I want to shrink the domain a little. This is omega epsilon. So a little bit distance from the boundary. Then you can integrate. And then take limit as epsilon tend to zero. It should diverge, so there's an expansion. And we know the Pfefferman theorem gives a, a simple expansion of the kernel itself. It's easy to identify the form of expansion, minus n plus g1 to minus n plus one, plus one, inverse plus L log epsilon plus 
some constant term plus small epsilon. Okay. So from the Pfeffermann's expansion, it's, it's easy to see the volume should have this expansion in powers of epsilon and log term because we have log term. Uh, this is not coming from a log term. Rho to the minus one give this log term. So we have uh, some number here and here. So we got number and uh, I was very happy at that time. So Sam, this is my so um, published in 2006, but actually I found this when I was a student. So this L is a bihoromark invariant. So this means if you have two domain, always writing the same same thing. So omega and omega tilde and bihomorphic, then L for omega equals L for omega tilde. So if you do the same calculation, actually in this case you can take any defining function, choose any defining function. The, you you got same L, and this should be the preserved. So but. This is published in 2006, but uh, it takes 10 years or so to publish because I can't find a non-trivial example. Okay. If this is zero, it's uh, disappointing. Uh, after publication, proved prove that L equals zero always. So the proof is not easy. It's quite complicated using Zege kernel, but uh, he proved that this is zero, so that my invariant is terminated, unfortunately. So, we, we still have a chance. So, this is gone, but we have, still have this, but it's quite difficult to compute. This is really global. They have no control of inside, so, I can say nothing about this. Yeah, if you change defining function, the number may be changed, so there is no way to see. So then, here's an interesting theorem. 2000. Physicists think the similar things. Okay, this is a coming from string theory. Oh. So consider domain with, so to simplify the argument, let me just consider Rm plus one. I want to count the boundary as a dimension m, so I put one more here. So this is a bounded domain. C infinity boundary. So bound, this is C infinity. Okay. And suppose that G plus is a complete Einstein metric on omega. Inside has complete Einstein metric, like Bergman metric or the Einstein, Kera Einstein metric in complex setting. So this is a, a negative. So I, I don't talk about uh, existence. This part is difficult and unsolved. But physicist doesn't care about this. So suppose you have such thing. And law is a defining function, again, of omega. And they assume that law square applied to G plus is C2 up to the boundary. So, so this is a tensor value, so I, I use the notation as a function, but uh, this means as a tensor, it extends to C2. This is the assumption. These are, this is the assumption. Then you can consider the boundary value of this metric. Suppose this is Riemannian, Riemann metric. Um, boundary. So we have a complete metric inside, and suppose that if you scale by defining function, 
And suppose that this gives a Riemannian metric on the boundary. So if these two are satisfied, so G, this G plus is called conformally compact Einstein metric. And here the law can be anything, so this is not unique, but so this define this conformal class of G is well defined. So if you change the law, you have another G on the boundary, but this is just a scaling of the one. So you have a natural class of conformal structure on the boundary. So you have uh, start with omega and G plus, this is a complete manifold. Then you have a boundary with conformal structure. So physicists call this ADS space, anti-jitter space. And this is called conformal field theory, which I don't know much. So this is called ADS CFT correspondence. Correspondence. So from here to here is easy, just taking the boundary variable. But the other direction, this is quite hard. You have to solve Einstein equation with, with degenerating boundary condition. So this direction is unsolved in many cases. The, the only known example is just a ball. And on the sphere, if you perturb the conformal structure, you have a nice perturbation of this G plus. So this, but it looks like there's a nice correspondence between these two theory. So using this, so this direction, uh, we can do this renormalization. And this is conformal geometry. So this is a geometry on compact manifold. So how to relate these two? So the, what physicists do is uh, volume renormalization. Dimension of the boundary is M. Okay. Let me use this. Okay. So, so take shrink a domain a little and D B G plus. So I have a complete Einstein metric, so consider the volume form for this Einstein metric. So it diverges when epsilon equals zero, but if you shrink, you have a number and you can consider expansion in powers of epsilon. C2, interesting is it, as step two, always. So maybe my next one. Plus four. Then at some stage you hit inverse plus constant plus bounded term. Ah, what are the oh, small option. Oh, it should be just a function that vanishes, so it should be O1. Okay, this is a constant term, this is a little bit more than that. Okay, so here, this is a constant term, this is a term which vanishes when epsilon equals zero. So this is for M odd. And if M is even, L log epsilon plus B plus small one, M or even. So situation quite looks like the Bergman Carnell case. Then N odd, V, this V is independent of 
row. Ah, so I have to normalize this row a little. So D log row with respect to G plus square should be one. This is a normalization. So G plus is, is complete, so it diverge. So, but this is a one form, so it means it, taking dual means the met, met components of the metric inverse converge to zero. So you can choose row, the norm of D log row to be one. And with, with boundary value given by, so choose a scale, so you can choose G plus square. So this is a boundary condition, and this equation inside, it has always, it always a smooth solution if you assume G plus has nice boundary behavior. So choose such one. So, so law maybe depend on choice of scale. But as long as this is satisfied, this is independent law. So we have an invariant. So this is called renormalized volume. And, and even L is independent of, of law. So it doesn't have name, but uh, we can say that L is a conformal invariant of boundary times G. So the, this V is, is not, not the invariant of the boundary because it, ah, so in this case, uh, we just consider the domain, so it may be determined by the boundary, but in general, so if you have a boundary, this is a boundary, so in physics you have to consider any, any manifold inside, so it may have non-trivial topology inside, so the, this B may pick up some information from here, and in physics you have to consider all possible filling by manifolds, so, so this is not the invariant of the boundary, it should be the invariant of the Einstein manifold inside. But this is an important concept. And this L is conformal invariant, but V is not, not invariant in this setting. And one more important thing is you can write down L as the integral of the L is given by some PG, so PG is a local invariant of G. So given, given G, you have some function. It's like the one it appear in the heat kernel expansion, some exp invariant polynomial in the curvature. So this is not conformal invariant, but the integral become conformal invariant. So that's the situation, and, and this is called Q curvature. Maybe Branson's, Tom Branson's. Branson's Q curvature. Okay. This is the conformal setting. So I want to do the same, similar thing for, for the complex case. Now return to the complex CN. We already have Einstein, Keller Einstein metric. Now G plus is a DD bar of log. log. This is Einstein, Keller, Keller Einstein. So rho is a defining function. Uh, in, in this part, we don't have to worry about the singularity in rho. So we only look at the first few terms. So the, the singularity appear in the Mondrian-Pen solution that doesn't appear in the, in the analysis I'm going to talk today. So, okay, so we have a complete einstein keller metric. Then choose, 
So rho, rho is a rho is a mon jump L3 So if if you fix coordinate, you, you have a one solution, but uh, mm, if you change the coordinate, you may have other solution. So ambiguity is that it may be you can choose other function. D, D bar F equals zero. So if you choose another coordinate, the volume form may change and you, you may have such a factor. So we have an equivalence class of defining function. They're both mon jump solution for some coordinates. So it's like a conformal geometry, but the scaling factor should be pretty harmonic. It's quite restrictive. Okay, then. So, two thousand seven. Two of my students, Marugame Atsumoto. Two of my students. We proved that. So, do the same thing. Take mon jump solution in some coordinate, and db for g plus. This is a complete metric, so it diverges when epsilon goes to zero. So start with this. It's like a Bergman kernel, and n minus one, the inverse, plus no log term, or one. So it's like this case, m odd case. Yeah, it happened to be the same. So the boundary is odd dimension. There's no log term moreover. V is independent of rho. So independent of rho, it means you can change rho by, if you change, so metric is unique determined by the complex structure, but this law can be replaced by the other law with, with pre-harmonic scaling. So even if you change this defining function, you have the same number. So B, B is bihormorphic invariant. is a bihomorphic invariant. So in the Bergman kernel case, there's no way to compute, but here you can do this. And moreover, this is non-trivial. And so V is an integral of some, something. Mm. What is a good theta? Okay. So this is the first time I'm introducing theta. It's a contact form. Theta equals to minus one d mod d bar rho. So this is after the boundary. So this is assumed to be strictly pseudo convex. So this gives a contact form. Contact form means this is a volume form. This is non-zero and uh, this P theta is a local of of Levy metric D theta. So D theta is just D D bar low. I restrict to the uh, complex tangent direction. So if you have a metric, you, you can define curvature using Webster's method, and you can write down this theta as a, some curvature and torsion expression. The integral will give this V. Okay, maybe I can. We already know the ambient metric. I, I can give you a construction of this P theta, uh, and this is called Q curvature, not Q, Q 
Q prime curvature. Okay, so we have G tilde is the ambient metric. Suppose so we, have, we consider the Laplacian for this jk equals zero to n, so g j k bar j k bar. So this is a Kera metric, so just apply derivative and take trace. This is a Laplacian for the ambient metric. So but this is uh, not therapeutic. It's a Lorentzian, so it's a wave operator. But that's point that's not interesting important in this situation. So consider and apply to log square. First, this is called Q curvature, right? Apply log to this, but this is always zero because this is pretty harmonic. DD bar killed this. It's a real part of home function. So it's a kill. And Q prime is given by log Z naught square square. And then restrict to the, so this is on the bundle, so we have to restrict Z naught to be one and Z to be boundary. So this is that some constant times of p prime theta. So c theta is this. Okay. So everything depends on defining function. So, so if we change defining function, so you use this scaling, ambient metric will change. And, all, and then also I also have to scale this z naught direction. So this is not rho, not CR invariant. This is. Not a CR invariant. If you change the scale, you have a different thing. And it's the transformation rule is not simple at all. Uh, if you change, you may have something which is divergence. So if you integrate, the, the error term will vanish, so it doesn't contribute to this V invariant. So that's the situation here. So if you do global geometry, you have to you cannot stay in the local invariant. You have to first construct something which is not invariant, but the integral is invariant. So this is the construction. And then so I have to study some property of this new invariant. And so joint with bent Elsted for omega near the ball. Just consider small perturbation of the ball. V omega takes minimal value. Only when omega is by whom to the ball. So if you perturb non trivially the, the invariant increase. And this is a ball is a unique minimal point, at least locally. We don't know what's happened for the domains which are far from the ball, but uh, locally I can do this. Okay, so this shows. The in, in particular, so the invariant is not trivial. That's good. Okay. And n equals two, it was already known. This is called Burns, Dan Burns, Junior, Stein. 
Un variante. Oh, the boundary. Their construction is quite different. They, they, they try to construct the analogy of the Chan-Simons invariant in conformal geometry. So CR geometry is an analogy of conformal geometry. It's natural to think about the Chan-Simons Chan in CR setting, and they, they did for the three dimension. Uh, the, the, the N equal two means the boundary is real, three-dimensional. They do some transgression and define this. But it turns out this agrees with this renormalized volume. Yes, that renormalized volume. And so this is one construction. There should be other way. Instead of considering the volume form, you can consider many other things which is canonically defined from the metric. So the uh, one choice is a uh, chunk class. Chunk class. If you consider chunk class, maybe CN, N is chunk class, that's an NN form, so you can integrate on domain, but uh, again, it's just give infinity. So it's better to renormalize it. So there are two ways to renormalize. One way is this, shrink a little and take expansion. Other way to, is to renormalize the curvature itself. That is quite helpful because you don't have to do much analysis. So take I, J, K, L. So this is a curvature of G plus. G, G plus is a complete Keller-Einstein. So this curvature tends to diverge at the boundary. But if you take trace-free part, so trace-free part, so rich tensor is just a multiple of G plus, so you subtract many copies of G plus from this tensor in a nice way, then you have a B, I, J, K, L. This is called the Bochner tensor. Bochner curvature. So this is C0. Each component is in C0. It, it, it continuously expanded. Not, not smoothly, but uh, at least you can integrate. So this has singularity, but singularity is just coming from rich tensor. So just remove all the contribution from rich tensor, then you got this Bochner curvature. Then, consider Ns chunk class. Usually I put this curvature, but uh, here is Bochner. Bochner curvature in here. Then this is continuous to the boundary. You can naturally def integrate. There's no expansion. The idea is due to Burns and Epstein. They, they did for the general case, but uh, the usually, if if this is a complex, compact complex manifold and this is a curvature, you got the gauss bonnet theorem. So this just gives maybe some constant of pi something, but uh, it's an Euler number here, but the, Omega is not compact, there is a contribution from the boundary. This is called boundary. This is called balanced Epstein. Invariant. Okay. So n equal two case, 
disagree with the renormalized volume and uh, everything become clear. The meaning is just uh, the renormalized volume is just a correction term coming from the boundary of, of this renormalized gauss von theorem. But for higher dimension, this is not the same. So, for n bigger than 2, b omega not equal to mu omega. I mean, maybe some constant, but even if you change some universal constant, this, these are different. Okay, maybe some constant. There's no universal constant that makes these two equivalent, invariant equivalent. Okay. So there's a difference, and also this is due to Marugame. In his master's thesis, proved that uh, he the one being there. This is given by again another invariant P theta boundary. of theta, or a Levy form. Maybe d theta will be better, Levy form. This is quite, ex his construction is quite explicit. It's like a charm form. There's no derivative in curvature. Here, the expression contains many derivatives. So if you expand this in terms of Webster curvature, there are so many derivatives. So. But this here, there's no derivative. So P theta is a something called Webster curvature. And this is torsion without derivative. And he has expressed formula. So for higher dimension, at least we have two class of invari global invariant that, that is given as an uh, integral of something. And this local function is not CR invariant. Okay. So the question is, ah, then also I can prove that in any, when, so this is term, um, so n equals three, I can do quite explicit co computation here. The same paper that the HMM, we proved that for omega near omega zero, B omega equals mu omega. Suppose we have chosen a constant, scale it so that it agree for the ball if and only if so the two invariant agree if and only if it is a ball it is true for mm, there's some much weaker assumption but the, this tells you that these two invariant are almost always different so you have you can define new invariant by so the the difference is another invariant which punishes for the ball, but also it can be written as a as a uh, integral of some local object which is not shear invariant. So the natural question is so here I start with Volume form. This is a volume form. Here we use Chan class, the top Chan class. Nth Chan class is easy to integrate. So there are many other Chan classes.
Problem. Construct global invariant. of boundary from other classes. So, so D, DBG plus, it, it, this is just a C1 to N. C1 is a Kerr form. And the other extrema is CN plus N. It's an nth chunk cost. There should be other choice with CI1, CI2, CIP with, mm, I should be N, with I1 plus I2 plus IP equals N. So given such chunk class and, and substitute the Bochner curvature, then you have some number. But, uh, it should be by homomorphic invariant, but we don't know what, what is the local expression, or is there any local expression of that? So that's a missing part. Maybe some expression, but the, the answer is not so clear. So Marugame did some special case with one of this is C1 or some restriction, he can do this, but uh, this is a major open problem. So, so I have five minutes. Okay, let me state. Open program. Okay, so theta, this is a contact form. So for the embedded case, you can consider this, okay, and restrict the boundary. So this gives a d theta give metric metric on on the T1, 0. Okay. So you, you have a metric and there's a connection. Metric connection with good torsion. This is called Webster Tanaka torsion a connection. Connection. This is Tanaka. Mm. So from this, you, you, you can define curvature and torsion. So curvature and torsion. A in their notation. So torsion never vanish due, due to the strict shadow convexity. You, you cannot do that. So there should be some, then you can construct local invariant of theta by, so again, applying some, some number of L1, LP, R uh, and uh, times uh, K one A K Q A and the contracts by using Levy metric. So you have uh, some scalar object. So take linear combination of all such. These are called so P theta 
Oak are invariant. Obsita means linear combination of, of the, these complete contractions. This is a very solid definition. So there's many choice. Assume that, suppose that P theta, theta determine all P theta such that is CR invariant. So local invariant, this is not CR invariant. So if you scale, if you scale theta by some factor, this is not this, or not, not even some good scaling. So if this is a CR invariant, that, that should mean some, some W weight P theta. So if this is equivalent, Equality, this is called the invariant of some weight, but that, that is already studied. So just consider more, you don't have to require, but uh, suppose that the integral is CR invariant. What's the possible choice? That's a natural question. And when n equals three, we can do this quite explicitly and uh, so C2 in boundary. So in this case, uh, first answer is if we consider all rho and theta there is no such invariant. So the, the only answer is zero. So maybe something with divergence can be put here, then the integral is zero. So we are interested in, in, in this, this number, this number. So, so I, I equals zero always. So choosing everything is not good. So change, just choose rho to be mon jumper solution. This is a big restriction. Then scaling is always dd bar f equals zero. So now we are in the setting of some restricted conformal geometry. Conformal geometry means you can scale by any function, but this is a shear geometry. You have more structure, so you can talk about preharmonic functions. So just consider a smaller class of contact form for which scaling is just a preharmonic function. Then in dimension two, this should be the constant multiple of or Burns Epstein variant, or renormalized volume, same thing for dimension two. This is maybe this is my theorem. Not so difficult. Just list up everything and check, and all possible radio combination. Then this is the only solution. It's a nice characterization of Burns Epstein variant. So the natural question: What happens for n what you can say so at this moment we know that there's one coming from Lenormand's volume other one coming from Burns Epstein variant so we have two dimensions the my conjecture is this is everything in two dimensions this uh, this is already the basis for such invariant 
And for higher dimension, there are more and more choice of Chan classes. So maybe Chan class give many examples, and possibly there are other technique which we don't know. So, so moon jump equation is very important from this point of view. So you can do shear or geometry within this nice scaling. Yeah. So I'm really trying this, but so far not much progress. Yeah. Yes. Dimension three is already so many times, so it's difficult. Okay. Let me stop now. <laughs>